American educated elites uh, think it's fine. Ever since 1967, they were very impressed by Israel's uh, military capacity and uh, have maintained that, uh, uh, you know, that uh, delight in being supportive of a major powerful military force. Of course, always with a humanistic cover, but that's normal. Uh, so the fact of the matter is that across the spectrum of major actors, uh, well, they seem to be pretty happy about it. Is it wise? You could debate it. I mean, I don't think it's wise. As I said, I, think it, I don't think it's good for Israel. I think they made a terrible mistake in 1971 by refusing peace, security, and insisting on expansion. And in fact, they were later compelled by force to back away from that expansion. That's Camp David and continue with other expansion. But, uh, you know, that's my judgment. I don't determine policy. Uh, but yes, it's a fair question. Could, could be asked. Uh, thank you. Um, first of all, um, I just would like to offer my condolences. Um, I would like you to elaborate a little on, on, on uh, you talked about the plan, this was planned, planned in a military sense and planned in a propaganda sense. And I would like to ask you to elaborate on aspects of the way in which the propaganda side has uh, been given expression in a couple of areas. Um, first of all, I noticed that uh, CNN and Reuters, among other major corporate media, uh, use the term incursion repeatedly. Secondly, s another reporter from the New York Times, you mentioned Ethan Bronner, Stephen Erlanger, who's reporting from Jerusalem, uh, had a story reporting on what Israeli military sources uh, had uh, rep uh, reported, had, had discussed with him apparently uh, regarding uh, people with weapons in Gaza um, in civilian clothes popping out of holes uh, and, 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 and went into other details. And thirdly, there was an interesting timing to me of a major front page feature story based presumably on timed leaks regarding Iran and Iranian, the, the fact that the Bush administration had supposedly said to Israel that they would not be authorized to fly over uh, Iraq uh, to bomb uh, alleged uh, uh, nuclear facilities, uh, but that instead the Bush administration were intensifying covert operations against those alleged uh, 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 programs in Iran. And finally, the interesting fact that Olmert supposedly spoke out uh, uh, against the occupation only weeks before launching this major invasion. Okay, I'm not sure I got everything, but uh, the, the meticulous planning of the invasion is discussed extensively in the Israeli press, and uh, to some extent here too. So, and it describes both aspects, the military planning and the propaganda effort. Uh, and it's, uh, how effective it's been, you know, one could argue. It's, there's one area where it's very effective in American elite opinion uh, and in the press, but probably not among the population. Uh, the only poll I've seen shows the population very divided, roughly 50-50 on the invasion, despite the massive propaganda, which is just replicated almost without deviation in the media, including the examples you mentioned. Uh, as for uh, reliance on Israeli military sources, well, of course, that's part of the uh, part of the propaganda system, it's kind of like the U.S. and Iraq, where reporters could go in if they were embedded, and uh, meaning propaganda agents, and uh, uh, the freelance reporters who tried to re report, uh, some of them were just dropped out of the corporate media. Uh, others could do it as freelancers. Uh, the uh, in the case of Gaza, Israel has simply barred all reporters, foreign or, uh, or it's even Israeli, because uh, they, they want to make sure that there's no direct reporting. I mean, what you can get is, you know, cell phone calls or something like that. And reports from people like uh, uh, Matt Gilbert, this Norwegian doctor, and UN officials and so on. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's all part of what they call their Hasbara campaign. Uh, Israel has 
two word Hebrew. They're two words for propaganda. Uh, one of them is standard word for propaganda. The other, Hasbara, is for their own propaganda. And the word means explanation. The tacit assumption is that everything we do is so obviously right that all we have to do is explain it to people. So it, and then they'll understand why we're actually exactly right. And that uh, Hasbara campaign does work among uh, uh, American intellectuals and Western European intellectuals generally. As for the populations, it's an open question. Uh, I should say even on the rejectionism, although it's almost 100% supported by the educated sectors and the media and so on. Of course, it's not called that. The facts are always suppressed. Uh, it's not among the population. Uh, roughly two-thirds of the population is in favor of uh, the Arab League plan, uh, normalization of relations within the international borders, basically the international consensus. But as usual, uh, public opinion has almost no effect on policy. It's an interesting fact about American democracy. Uh, it's, in fact, a matter of principle. There's kind of principle reasons, which go back to James Madison, where, why that has to be the case. Uh, and it clearly is the case, and the public knows it. So about 95% of the public objects that public opinion is not taken into account by the government. But, uh, you know, they're two-legged beasts, too. They don't really understand important things. Uh, the, uh, but uh, that's part of the... Uh, control. About the civilians popping out of holes, yeah, you can pull that straight out of Nazi propaganda, you know, British propaganda during the Revolutionary War, in fact, any imperial war. I mean, any invading imperial power would be delighted if resistance, uh, if people who are resisting put on uniforms and stood out in an open field uh, so they could be destroyed by uh, overwhelming military force. And they get very upset when uh, you know, Minutemen and others uh, uh, don't uh, accept these rules. Uh, they should be wearing red coats like the Hessian soldiers, the British mercenaries. Uh, so sure, that's a standard. I mean, what's interesting is that I think you said Erlanger could even repeat such nonsense without collapsing in ridicule. Uh, about Iran, that's, you know, we don't know the details, but the reports are interesting. They do indicate two things. One, that uh, the U.S. barred uh, Israel from overflying Iraq, which would make it very difficult for them to attack Iran. Uh, and uh, the other aspect is that they apparently admitted that they're carrying out terrorist actions inside Iran. That's not the first time there's been evidence of that for some time, including major terrorist acts from, uh, from uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. But again, that's normal for an out outlaw state. Uh, the failure to, uh, the, the lack of support for an Israeli attack is interesting. I, mean, I think it's pretty clear that Israel does not want, that the uh, United States does not want Israel to attack Iran. Uh, that could lead to a major conflagration with huge effects uh, for American troops, for oil supplies, everything else. Uh, it wasn't much discussed, but there was a, a resolution, a uh, congressional resolution, a debate in the House, H.R. 362, I think it was, uh, which uh, called for uh, the U.S. to, in effect, impose a blockade on Iran, you know, bar shipping in the Gulf and so on. It had enormous support. APAC, the Israeli lobby, was passionately in support of it and pulling out all the strings. It initially had very overwhelming congressional support, but it was voted down. Uh, it was voted down in part thanks to lobbying by the anti-war movement, which is hardly a massive lobby in the United States. But it was voted down mainly because the U.S. government didn't want it. And the lobby consistently slinks away silently uh, when it comes into conflict with U.S. power uh, for good reasons. They know they haven't got a chance and they don't want to harm themselves. And this passed very calmly as well, many other such cases. Uh, as for uh, Omert, he did say, in his, basically in his resignation speech, he had to resign because of charges of corruptions. 
so he resigned, and uh, he's still in office, but basically resigned. Uh, 